coronavirus pandemic has its many stories of origin, escaping from a lab in Wuhan, China, also from the wet market or animal market. Whichever the plot is, zoonotic diseases and COVID-19 is a worry for the veterinary world right about now. You can tell us about it. Now they are considering the possibility of mutual transmission between man and animal. And to ensure total victory over the disease, it is key and very so expedient to factor in pets as well as other economic animals such as cattle, goats, ram, poultry and a host of others in the country. The Veterinary Council of Nigeria, a body charged with the responsibility of coordinating and overseeing the practice of the profession in Nigeria, is up and doing. What are the extra worries in the management of the global pandemic? As we handle our livestock, being generated from the practice, care to slaughter, and also ultimately to your plates. My guest is well versed in this field, so we'll find out more. Welcome to the program. My name is Blessing Abu. Now, my guest holds a PhD in veterinary epidemiology from the University of uh, Plymouth. That's also, and uh, she's also a doctor of veterinary medicine from the Amadou Bello University, Zaria. She's the first veterinarian to actualize the integration of sniff dogs into the national security architecture while serving as officer in charge of the veterinary uh, of the presidential villa in 2005. She was recognized by the UNESCO as a pair among women in the field of science. On the spot today is uh, Commissioner of Police and Head of Nigerian Police Force Animal Branch, Abuja, and she's the first female president of the Veterinary Council of Nigeria. So it's my honor to welcome to the program Dr. Aisha to Abubakar Baju. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Blessing, for having me. We always love it when we have the first in this area. And as a woman, congratulations. We must say to you. Thank you. Yes, this appointment was recent, so we want to share some of those ideals. This is not. Uh, a new area to you it's your field but then the global pandemic is bringing on so many things and yourself as well as colleagues veterinarians are actually worried about the management when it relates to your field tell us about this um the pandemic you know everybody knows that it started from the wet market in wuhan and it's a um, place where you have a variety of animals being eaten raw, sold, and rest, and that's where it came about. Mm -hmm. So what it's telling us is that uh, this, animal, this disease, the pandemic, comes from animals to man. Now, when you look at it as veterinarians, it gives us a, a lot of concern, and it should give everybody concern. For us in veterinary uh, practice, Coronavirus, that's where the COVID-19 virus is in the family from uh, the coronavirus day. Um, it's very, we are very conversant as veterinarians, we are very conversant with the coronavirus mm -hmm. because it causes a lot of diseases uh, in, in animal species. So when it jumped species from animals to man, uh, then there is need for all everybody to put hands on deck to work together to find how we can go about handling this uh, pandemic um zo in, 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 you know the the issue of zoonosis that's diseases that are being transmitted from animals to man from man and vice versa mm -hmm. um although up till now it's not documented that covid 19 is pandemic mm -hmm. but there is zoonotic potential to it even when it was declared as a pandemic by the WHO? Yeah, it's pan mm -hmm. a pandemic mm -hmm. means, I mean, it's, uh, it's worldwide. Why it's a that? global issue. Okay. Yeah, but what we're talking about is the zoonotic part of, part of it. Of it. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, I just mm -hmm. defined what zoonosis that's is. That um, there is transmission between man to animal, animal to man. Right. You know, that's where the problem is. As it is now, although it has jumped species from animal to man, right. There is that link from man to mm. animal and back again mm. as COVID-19 okay. has not been documented okay. yet. Okay. But the transmission from human to man has been documented. Mm. We have the case in cats, dogs of recent. We have in the tiger, in uh, the bronze zoo, in, in, in New, New York. York and so many others so that gives us a lot of concern and uh, very recently as well we have um, um, the, the employees of major beef and pork 
product uh, industry in the U.S. being closed down because majority of the employees in that in that industry were tested positive for COVID-19. So that should give us a lot of concern. So indicating that there might be likelihood of uh, uh, pot uh, zoonotic potential of okay. COVID-19. Okay. For, for, so for us as a nation, where are the risk factors? Because we too, we... Like I've already pointed out, people keep pet, uh, pets here. Absolutely. We have economic animals yes. from the north to the south. People yeah. keep them in large numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not out of place that we have markets, uh, slaughter uh, places, abattoirs, where humans, of course, work. And yeah. directly these animals could have been, and with people coming down. So your concern as, uh, as a council for the practitioners looking into dump some of these areas, where are the greatest uh, risk factors to, that we've seen today? Um, well, on our own part, we try to be proactive, even though we kept uh, um, drawing the attention of government of the zoonotic potential of uh, the COVID-19, and that is why we call on government to at uh, at, the, at the level of uh, uh, working. There's a working group on the COVID-19, there's a PTA from the Presidential Task Force to all the state task forces. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we advised government that veterinarians should be involved, should be included in these teams so that we should be able to work together because when you are fighting it, is, it should be multidisciplinary. Mm -hmm. However, um, the last time we were at the fair FCT, we paid a cut seek on the Honorable Minister of FCT, and we made a case and immediately gave uh, approval for veterinarians to be included into the FCT EOC on COVID-19. We have written to uh, PTF, they have also responded. We are still um, interfacing on the possibility of, of that. However, as I said, mm. on our own part as veterinarians, mm. um, we try to be proactive. You don't have to wait for government to say, oh, you are part of a committee before you, are, you do your professional responsibility. But this really is very high in these parts of the world, because, uh, at least in our nation, uh, the possibility of mutual transmission from man to the animals. It's, it's very possible. It's very possible. But as it is now, as I told you, you know, science is about documenting and evidence. You cannot just say, oh, it's zoonotic. You have to uh, document it, mm -hmm. that this disease can be transmitted from animal to man and vice versa. So far, we have seen transmission from human to animals. Okay. It is that link that we have not mm -hmm. seen, but we cannot rest and say, oh, we are waiting until we see that. So that is why we're putting a lot of things on our own part as professionals to see how we will uh, counter this just in case. And that's why we have some measures. Now the Veterinary Council has launched what we call the contamination uh, program of major livestock and live birds market across okay. the Federation. All of them? Yes. Uh, the contamination of also abattoirs for to ensure food safety as well as other animal related areas so these are ways that we think we can also uh, support government effort okay. in the fight against the pandemic right. uh, dr Baka Baji, but for for you, for you as a practitioner and also colleagues practitioners i wouldn't know how much of visitation you go before this pandemic I, anyway from time to time to the abattoirs to markets you it will it will worry you if you if you're a frequent uh, abattoir visitor to see the, the kind of places i don't know how much of enforcement of cleanliness and some other area of enforcement of what it should be that you have taken into consideration because uh our worry mainly that sometimes even the way the meats or, or, or the meat or whether maybe poultry or livestock itself is being moved it's uh, worrisome, Absolutely. and also it's not neat enough. The sanitary condition, it's appalling. So I don't, I, how do you step in into that, especially now that we have this on our hands? <clears throat> well, um, and that's just statutorily. Uh, it's the, the, the responsibility of a veterinarian to ensure f food safety, that wholesome meat which is the consumer. Mm. So normally, even without the pandemic, veterinarians are um, de deployed to abattoirs to ensure that how often it's, 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 it's routine it's routine all over the place it's routine wherever you see an abattoir there's always a veterinary uh, doctor it's a veterinary surgeon in that uh, abattoir that is part of his that is part of our stu statutory responsibility public uh, health aspect of it mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's our normal duty 
generally. However, because of the, this pandemic, as I said, that is why we try to put some other effort in place okay. so that we will be able to succumb. All even suya sellers and all this, we have to, it, it, it involves a lot of uh, talking to them. You know, sometimes somebody can be uh, infected and uh, he can easily sneeze onto it. So there's a lot of, a lot of issues. But when you talk about the um, state of our abattoirs, of course, yes, we, we as a regulatory body or as a profession, we can only advise because uh, it is also government responsibility to ensure that uh, the right structure is in place. And talking about the right structure, is the first time a woman is heard in the council and say we could be firmer to do our duties as, uh, as, as women. But then the extra touch is that is, uh, is a law enforcement officer yeah. that is in charge now. What do you make of the uh, enforcement level, either to uh, for uh, taking over, and what, what are your uh, goals to addressing that? Um, before I became the president of the council, you know, it's an election. Part of my objectives, my campaign objectives mm -hmm. of what I want to do is to in enforce laws. Yeah, we have a lot of laws looking at these things. Mm -hmm. So we want to enforce this, this existing laws and also amend some of our laws that do not, I mean, uh, fall into what we have uh, currently. Um, <clears throat> so th these laws, there are certain different ways of doing it, but we're trying to work. As we, you know, as we just took over, it's just barely two months, as we're taking over to implement some of our campaign promises that we made, mm -hmm. then the, came the pandemic. But I can assure you that the council is working very hard to ensure enforcement of all our existing laws. Okay. Dr. Aisha, uh, Baju, we're looking at um, a break at this point to let you take a breather. Okay. When we get back, more about what the council is doing to help in the management of COVID-19 as well as other things they need to know about the council mm -hmm. and how Nigerians can keep safe alongside their animals and their meals is what we'll be finding out Thank from you, you after the break. Thank you. You're watching On The Spot and my guest is the President Veterinary Council of Nigeria. She's also a Commissioner of Police and you'll get to find out more about what the council is doing in terms of COVID-19 management in their field. We'll be right back after this break. The coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, has been declared by the World Health Organization as a global pandemic. While clinical trials are ongoing for a vaccine and a possible cure, there is no known treatment for the coronavirus. Nigeria has recorded some of these cases and people are advised to take these preventive measures to keep themselves safe and contain the further spread of the virus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water or use hand sanitizers all the time. Maintain social distancing. Avoid touching your eyes, nose and mouth. Practice respiratory hygiene. If you have fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early. Do not panic. Stop the spread of unconfirmed news. Follow the official government news outlets and report all cases immediately. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's largest television network. Yes, welcome back. If you just joined us, the program is on the spot and I have the president of the Veterinary Council of Nigeria on set. <coughs> Let's uh, push further with what COVID-19 management has been with the profession. And Nigerians also are known to be lovers of animals, so some of them are kept as pets. And some have already gone into businesses with the economic value for such livestock. For those who are um, having uh, animal farming as a profession, what are the precautionary measures you'll be giving them at this time? For some, they have to actually know we know of the herders moving up and down the nation. And we also know of those who try to keep them in their backyards. But safety for the environment is what counts. Yes, um, very important. Like uh, we just celebrated the World Veterinary Day, and the and the theme for this year has to do with uh, uh, protecting environment for animal and uh, human health. Um, you know, we have to do a lot of advocacy. It's uh, it's quite difficult, especially with the uh, nomads that move around. Um, we're looking at uh, sensitization. We have been talking to our, our veterinarians. How? Because normally in every farm, 
there will be a veterinarian that is consulting, that is uh, taking care of those animals in a poultry farm and what have you. The message from the council is that ensure your safety, the safety of your client and also your patients. Mm. So that uh, once our veterinarians get to in contact, maybe even those people that are having, that have um, companion animals. So when we come to the clinic, these are the messages. If you are in self-isolation, for instance, you, is for any reason you are in self-isolation, we advise that also keep away your pet so that you do not contaminate because we have seen it documented uh, that you can easily uh, transmit and this such. Mm -hmm. such. So you keep also your animal. As you keep yourself indoors, you also keep your animal indoors so that it does not get contaminated or infected. So all these measures we've put in place to in Enlighten our colleagues so that they will now uh, also in, in uh, uh, once they get that they now put it forward and make sure that. What uh, has been the response care. so far, at least within um, the spirit tracks, amongs the vets or yeah, among the uh, farmers? Amongs the vets, also for farmers. Among the farmers, we've been working very closely with them. Uh, we've gotten uh, messages across to them through through our our colleagues. And we have also supported them during this very difficult time because one thing is um, in the in the in the confusion of the lockdown, um, we try to remind the the, the government. Uh, although the, Mr. President has also made it very clear mm. that uh, you should allow essential services, animal and um, I mean agricultural products mm. to move freely, but we've gone ahead for me as a commissioner of police also to work closely with the police force management to ensure that we make seamless movement for them so that they will be able to move their product so that they will not lose so much during this uh, this pandemic uh, we have enlightened our police officers also to understand mm. the need that they should allow free flow of uh, animal and animal products uh, drugs and vaccines and what have you so we've tried to support them with with uh, with their with their business as well as with their health so that we communicate to them as we get to their farms, mm. we enlighten them for that. Okay, I, I, I like about that term, the sensitization is going on fine according to how you have laid it uh, uh, open. Yeah. Now we know vehicles are transporting animals into boundaries, into states. Could there be extra uh, caution from the, the council to actually have some of the, your men or women as the case may be at this uh, boundary post to actually look into possibility of animals that are unwell moving alongside other ones and infecting perhaps uh, already uh, already we have uh, the national uh, quarantine services okay the quarantine uh, service itself that is its, its statutory responsibility and uh, we have veterinarians the head of the national uh, quarantine service is a veterinarian mm -hmm. we have a lot of veterinarians in the council and they have control posts across the federation on major federal highways okay so those uh, control posts the, the role of the control post first is is to provide services whereby you come when you come with a truck maybe you've traveled from all the way from let's say taraba state you want to go to east so there must be a control post where you will stop by and the essence of that control post is for the animals first we, we are worried about animal welfare issues so that the animal does not travel for too long and by the time it gets there it is weak it has what lost is the, condition what is the longest uh, <clears throat> time frame to take an animal on a trip what 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 are your um, established uh, data on that established data we ca we 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 look at like uh, 7 to 8 hours we should be able to have somewhere to rest so that place is for animals to rest they will provide them with feed they will uh, there's water supply there and they are veterinarians posted to those quarantine uh, control posts post. to check on the health of the animal that's for disease control also so even without the pandemic, it is a routine that we do. So they stop, check the animals to ensure, or is there any dead one, or is there a sick one, we check. If it's, something, if it's not a serious thing, we handle it. If, if it's a serious issue or there's a disease that is of public health concern, it is also taken care of. So where are the other worries for veterinarians and also the cancer generally for your people in discharging their duties effectively? Well, as I said, we keep talking to them. Of course, yes, there are a lot of challenges. Just Such like as, uh, we want to know that, those challenges. Why we always feel you are not there doing the job is because we don't get to see some of this enforcement when they come into place. People just okay. It's just it's just the way you with know, Nigeria. You know, sometimes, and sometimes you never know what somebody does until when you are 
really involved. Uh, it's just like a policeman. Somebody say, oh, the police are not working. And then I've got some of my friends, sometimes they call you middle of the night and say, I have got armed robbers at home. What can you do? I say, just give me two minutes. And they are sitting before you give me the address, everything you have there. Before five, ten minutes, police are there. I say, oh, really? Police are working. I didn't know police are working. So these are some of the issues. If you don't go to the abattoir and you know the, if you talk to an average butcher that works in the abattoir, he will tell you that he knows that veterinarians are there mm -hmm. and they are doing these this responsibilities. However, the concern also, are, of course, in terms of uh, the welfare, mm -hmm. is, is, is general what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, like in this type of uh, pandemic, we expect that also as the government is looking, taking care of uh, human medics as um, frontliners, veterinarians should also be looked upon as frontliners. They are also exposed to a lot of dangers, mm -hmm. a lot of risk, and uh, all this uh, personal protection equipment should be extended to veterinarians in discharging their duties mm -hmm. to ensure that they protect themselves and, uh, and, 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 and ensure uh, public health. Okay. For, for medical uh, doctors, I uh, know they want, okay, these are the same terms for their own uh, patients once it's about COVID-19. Yeah. For your patients, <laughs> That is the animals now. What are those symptoms people should actually, should they, for those who have, um, you call them now, uh, companion, companion animals? animals. Because yes. I heard that when yes. you said that, so uh, com companion animals, pets, and all of this, what should the people watch out for? Especially for those you know that are uh, uh, v v kept very in the country. You know, as, as, as we said, this is a new a new disease and uh, we've just had very few cases in in animals and um, the scientists uh, vet are still working scientists are still working mm -hmm. to be able to say they are bringing out the what you expect to see in animals however um like the the take case of the uh, tiger in in um bronze. in the bronze zoo uh, i spoke i spoke with the, with the with my colleagues in bronze okay. uh, because at one time i was a guest speaker there okay so i know them so immediately the case came up i I gave them a call so that it won't be that kind of uh, media, false media. So we, we spoke and I asked them, okay, what signs? They say, they, they, what, what they said is that the, the tiger was showing symptoms almost similar to that of humans. But until we document and over time we'll be able to know mm -hmm. what are the signs. We, we will also expect them to show some uh, respiratory symptoms. Mm, okay, yeah. well basically we should just watch out for such um, Yes, uh, and, 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 and now uh, last time we, we flagged off um, the decontamination exercise uh, in, in FCT where the uh, Honorable Minister of State, FCT, w went there to flag off and one of the things we discussed is for veterinarians to also go into research and even if it's uh, just random uh, sampling of uh, these companion animals, especially pets owned by people that have tested positive or they are in self isolation, we can test them and also see and watch them. Okay. So, so those are the things we want to do, really. Yes, so I, I, quickly, I know we, mu we must go now. Sniff dogs were your idea at the point. Yeah. Tell us the value that have been added in terms of security. A lot, a lot, a lot. I can tell you blessing if um, the dog, generally, the dog, the olfactory organs, that is the organ of smell in dogs, is over a million times that of man. Ooh. Yes. So what you can smell, the dog can smell it a million times. What you cannot smell, let's say for instance, you conceal an explosive in a suitcase or drugs or currency, whatever it is, and uh, you can easily pass the suitcase. You wouldn't know because you can't smell it. But a, a trained dog, it is not just any dog. Exactly. I want you to I understand. To come there. No, no. It is not a, a trend because training involves uh, using the natural instincts of the dog. Because they, naturally, the dog has natural instincts of smell. So we, de we, we now work on that natural instinct to, to develop the extra and expose do that, that, that dog to frequent what we call imprinting on that particular substance you want the dog to sniff mm. so the dog you keep and then you can see i'm sure when you travel you mm. see that a dog will pass by your suitcase and you just go and grab it because it can it can it can sniff smell that substance which it has been trained million on million in micrograms of the quantity in fact sometimes you see that a dog that is trained to indicate on drugs, we just go and indicate on, 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 on currency, on money.
And you begin to wonder. The truth of the matter is that that, that currency or the money has, must have been touched by drug handlers. So they must have left certain particles Traits. of the drug on it. So it has given a lot of the, the explosive now that we have issues with uh, terrorists using IEDs, explosives, and the So we train this dog to be able to detect. If you conceal it, the dog will be able to tell us, tell the hand that there's something in, in, in <laughs> Commissioner in of Police and Head of Nigerian Police Force Animal Branch, Abuja, and also first female president of the Veterinary Council of Nigeria. Dr. Aisha to Abubakar, but thank you very much for coming thank on the spot. Thank you, blessing for thank having Thank you for your insight. Me. Thank you. And the brilliant mind, and we wish you and your, uh, the board a very fruitful time. Thank you very session. much, blessing. Thank you. Okay, we also appreciate your time with us, and um, next time it will be with another interesting guest on the next edition of the program. My name is Blessing Abu.